Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, you learned about converting your binary annotations or multinary annotations into uh, Coco style JSON and then Coco style JSON. Obviously, the type that you use for mask or CNN, convert them into YOLO v8. And the reason why we did that is one of the reasons I should say is so we can actually use that data set in YOLO v8 which is not going to be today because this tutorial is all about understanding YOLO, uh, the version 8 uh, YOLO. And then in the next one, we're going to take the annotations that we created in the last tutorial and then use those to customize YOLO for our specific challenge. And I keep referring to the last video. I hope you guys know by now, especially the regular subscribers, that I number my videos. This is video number 333, as you can see on the bottom left corner. And the previous one, please look for 332 or just follow this playlist. And uh, yeah, so the goal for this tutorial is to understand YOLO v8. And the next one is to actually train a custom model. So if you want to be notified of that, of course, this would be the time to pause the video, find that subscribe button hit that subscribe button. And if you're feeling extra generous, look for the thanks button right above, top left of uh, the subscribe button and go ahead and click on it. Okay, now let's get back to the topic here. What is YOLO V8? So the whole point of this exercise is to understand what it is and get a quick, you know, uh, your hands dirty by using a pre-trained model and uh, getting a first feel for what it feels like basically you know to to uh, segment or to do object detection using yolo v8 okay now before we jump into the code part just a quick very brief uh, overview of yolo yolo stands for you only look once and uh, it makes sense because in this case the algorithm only looks once uh, in a way uh, looks once but from multiple uh, with multiple focuses. Again, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, it's basically, it's an object detection system. Traditionally, it has been an object detection system. And why is it so famous? Because it's super fast. So it's almost real time. I mean, you see many videos on YouTube, you go back, you know, where you take the webcam input and you can kind of detect, hey, this is a pen and this is a microphone and so on, right? So this is, uh, uh, but, but I never paid attention to that until now because uh, I thought it was a toy. Well, at least not for scientific image analysis. It's, it does a great job if you're trying to do other tasks, but now they started to include certain aspects that could make this YOLO V8 useful for scientific applications. And uh, how does it work at a very high level? Uh, it's again, it's l you only look once, right? So it's a single pass detection, which means you have an image and the image gets broken down into a grid. It can be 13 by 13 grid or whatever, the 19 by 19 grid and so on. And each cell is responsible for predicting objects. Uh, so if you look at the right hand side on the screen there, you see that grid and uh, multiple boxes on the top of uh, on the top and bottom, you have the class probability map. So you can see how there are two things that are going on. Yes, you're only looking once, but on the top, you're actually looking at the bounding boxes with some confidence number for each bounding boxes. Basically, what is the probability of some object lying within that bounding box? In a way, think of it that way. And uh, bottom is class probability. Okay, so you tell me that there is a box right here, but what class is there? You know, is there a pen in there? Is there a dog or is there a bicycle, right? And on the right hand side, you get the final detections, but there are a few things that actually go on. So first thing first, it's a convolutional neural network architecture. Just like any other convolutional neural network, you have like this uh, uh, network that actually goes down in size and increases in terms of, uh, you know, uh, filters and so on. But at the end of it, what you get is a final layer where you have a tensor that contains the coordinates of the bounding boxes and the class probabilities and the confidence scores for uh, uh, confidence scores. So the, the next graphic actually probably summarizes it better. But let's look at the bounding box prediction. There are two things going on, right? So there is a class and there is bounding boxes. So each grid cell, it predicts multiple boxes and associated confidence scores. So you get, okay, there is a bounding box and here is the confidence that this is a bounding box. And the confidence reflects that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, there is a 
object within this bounding box and the coordinates are normalized basically between 0 to 1. The bounding box coordinates are normalized to between 0 to 1 and again the another aspect that's going on here is class prediction. Basically I'm explaining things that you see on this graph. On the top bounding boxes plus confidence on the bottom you have probability map and that's exactly what we are looking at. So what is class prediction? So in addition to the bounding boxes, each grid cell, it predicts the probability distribution over whatever the classes that you're looking at. You can have a dog, car, person, uh, you can have mitochondria and you know ribosomes and lysosomes, or it's up to you, right? So it depends on what you train the model on, but these are the class probabilities that you actually get. And uh, and you, finally, you kind of have to refine it. That means you apply thresholding and non-max um, non suppression. So thresholding is pretty straightforward, right? So hey, this uh, there is a probability of 0 0.6 that this object belongs to a certain class and your threshold is 0 0.5. That means you get this object passed through your threshold filter. If it's less than that, if you set a high threshold of 0 0.7, then it goes down. Again, these are all kind of normalized. So when you train your model only for like, I don't know, 50 epochs, then to detect the same object, the threshold may be as low as 0 0.01. But if you, as you kind of train it, uh, you know, for more and more epochs, the thresholds start to make sense, then uh, intuitive sense, meaning then you can set a threshold of 0 0.5 or 0 0.6. Then you can think of them as, hey, there is a 50% confidence. So uh, play with the threshold if you think certain objects are over detecting or under detecting. So that's one key thing here. And non-max suppression, I hope you know what that is. It's basically you get two boxes around the same object and then it's basically uh, keeping only one. That's what non-max uh, suppression is. So it's it's basically whatever the highest conference is, just go ahead and keep that if, if multiple boxes uh, show up at the same place. And finally, the instant segmentation. Uh, this is, uh, uh, as you probably know, instant segmentation is not just an object detection. Object detection I refer to as putting a box around your object and instant segmentation is yes, you have a box, but then the corresponding pixels for the object of interest within that box is also segmented. So mask CNN is a great example of instant segmentation. So YOLO V8, the version eight actually incorporates this instant segmentation and a few other uh, ways of actually uh, performing segmentation. So this is why I started to give serious look at YOLO V8 for scientific image analysis. Now, what it is, I mean, we talked about it, but YOLO existed for a few years now, and it's building on top of this YOLO architecture. And uh, it's basically a framework, right? And uh, it allows you to perform multiple uh, tasks. And I'll show what, my, uh, yeah, there you go. Multiple ta tasks, including classification, detection, segmentation, tracking, and pose, no matter what, uh, new frameworks that you look at, whether it is uh, Detectron 2, for example, and YOLO, typically there is similar functionality. And conceptually, YOLO should be faster. Now, which one is more accurate? You have to perform the experiment I talked about uh, you know, the Detectron 2 a couple of uh, videos ago. So with the code, obviously, right? So take that and take this on your specific data set and see which one is faster. And again, which one is more accurate. If your application demands a speed where you can sacrifice certain accuracy, then probably YOLO is the right thing because maybe you want to deploy this as a real-time uh, detection system you know, uh, attach this to your microscope acquisition, for example, to detect and count nuclei as you're imaging. Or if accuracy is uh, more important, I'm assuming right now, as you can tell, that Detectron would give you more accurate results compared to YOLO, but again, that completely depends on your specific case. So I'm just showing you how easy it is to train your own custom model in the next video and uh, introducing to YOLO here. So you have all the toolkits necessary to experiment on your own images. Okay, I start to realize that I'm taking way too much time just talking, but I think these are all very important points. Now, uh, what's up with version eight? And first of all, instant segmentation is available in version eight, so I am using version eight, but uh, what other improvements? If you look at the left graph there, the number of parameters in YOLO V8, for the same number of parameters, you're actually getting much higher MAP values, so that is awesome. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that that's it, right? I mean, you're, in, in a way, if, if I wanna summarize this, 
you're getting much better performance using YOLO V8, and which is expected. Obviously, they're releasing new versions, so they're continuously optimizing their uh, framework right here. Now, what pre-trained weights are available? So you can actually download certain pre-trained weights and use that as a starting point and then customize your specific model to that. Again, we are gonna do that in the next tutorial. Do not forget to subscribe. But in this video, we are gonna use a couple of these pre-trained models and segment a normal, natural uh, image natural scene and see how easy it is to actually do that job okay i think that's it let's go ahead and jump to the code and start using our pre-trained models for object detection so let me fire up google colab and continue this video okay i'm in colab i zoomed in quite a bit so i hope you can see this okay even on smaller screens i uh so let me go ahead and start the runtime first of all make sure that your runtime is gpu and that's fine and let me go ahead and connect it and this is on colab and uh, the this is i'm recording this in uh, september of 2023 i hope you're also watching this in september but even uh, if you're watching later please make sure uh, you know all the packages are you know uh, correctly installed again usually these things have a shelf life of two years, three years or so, but if you're watching this sometime later in 2026, I'm sure a newer version of YOLO is available, so you're watching probably older video. Probably still works, <laughs> okay? Don't get me wrong, probably still works. Okay, now that this is connected, I think I should stop talking and start installing stuff. So I'm using YOLO v8 from Ultralytics library. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this. Of course, I'm doing this in Colab, but nothing stops you from doing this in your local IDE. Okay, the library is installed, and uh, now let's go ahead and import YOLO from our Ultralytics and Matplotlib for plotting and Pill just to handle images. Let's go ahead and run that. And then once this is all the libraries are imported, now it's a matter of just importing our, uh, our uh, models. So let's go ahead and import two models one is yolo v8n.pt the other one is 8n-seg.pt obviously you can say uh, clearly see this one doesn't have an extension of seg that is basically this is the top one is the object detection or the detection model and the bottom one is the instant segmentation model so i'm i'm loading both of these so we can look at the result from both of these so of course it's going to download it if you're doing this the first time and uh, now that the models are downloaded that's not bad it's only 6.23 megabytes huh so each of these ones so now the model is here now let's go ahead and segment our images it's it's that simple so step one go ahead and uh, identify your image and that image path can be an input down here by the way an actual image uh, numpy array can also be an input here but if you give an image path it's going to convert that into numpy array and then you know and then give you the result okay so uh, my detection model dot predict and instance model dot predict so we are going to get two results and let's plot and see how the results look like and let's also explore what the detection underscore results actually mean like what what's contained in it okay so uh, by the way you can actually give a list of images as input in this case we only gave one image as an input so you can give a list of images as input so here in this case it says uh, okay for the top one it uh, this is the input size and using the top model which is the detection model it found two bottles one cup one knife three bowls one chair obviously the image we supplied is a kitchen.jpg we'll see that in a second and the bottom one is not exactly identical to the top one because this one is a segmentation result so the results may be similar but not identical it did find two bottles but then two cups not just one cup it found one bowl probably no knives so go ahead and study these results now let's go ahead and plot it i'm looking at the detectron results and looking at the zeroth uh, in the list so the output is basically a list of results and in our case, we have one image, but if you have multiple images, then of course, zeroth image is the first one and then uh, so on. So that's where, and then we are just uh, plotting it. 
So let's go ahead and plot the results from detection and instance so you can clearly see what the difference is between detection and instance. So there you go. Let me scroll down and identical images, almost identical results. You can see the, uh, the oven right there, 0.48 and oven here, 0.43 confidence. Similar, but not exactly the same. The refrigerator 0.91 here, 0.86. Now, the thing I want you to notice is on the left-hand side, we have object detection, which means we only have a bounding box around the object. On the right-hand side, we have a bounding box plus all the pixels corresponding to this box are uh, painted. Now, if you look at, uh, I think uh, the best thing to look at is this oven. Look at this oven right here and it put a bounding box around it, right? The bounding box is a rectangular box. But once you do instant segmentation, you see how the pixels are painted yellow for only the oven pixels, but the table is in front of it. It's uh, masking the actual full oven right there. So the table pixels are blue, but the oven pixels are yellow. So you can now get an accurate area measurement of how much oven uh, you know, pixels are here. I hope that makes sense. That I, I, this is exactly the reason why I like to use uh, instant segmentation or semantic segmentation for scientific images, because now these results can be quantitative, not just a bounding box. But if you're just trying to detect audience on the, you know, or pedestrians on the street, and uh, designing an autonomous driving, you know, uh, you have a camera and you don't want to hit any uh, people or any objects in general, then uh, a bounding box is more than enough because you know exactly where the coordinates are. So you can just go ahead and stop the car or turn it left or right or whatever, right? Take an action based on this. So depending on the application, one of these is what you need. And uh, my guess is object de detection would be much faster compared to instant segmentation because it doesn't have to do the second step of segmenting these pixels. Okay, now move on. And uh, now a few things. Let's look at the instance results. Again, I put zero right there because we only have one image and that image has an ID of zero. And let's look at the length of result.boxes. We have 14 results. That means we identified 14 objects in here. And uh, you can get bounding boxes right there. So you can get bounding box coordinates, class ID, uh, let me put space right there and probability for a specific box. Let's look at box number zero. Yeah. And for that, what is the, so the object type is 72 and I printed all the object types. So if you actually go all the way down here, that is refrigerator. Okay. Uh, you can use this as lookup table and print this as refrigerator. So you don't have to kind of go through this. We'll do all of that later in the next tutorial. But uh, for now, I just want to end by showing you that a lot of stuff gets stored as part of this result and you can unpack it and you can do further downstream analysis once uh, once you have these numbers in your hand. So I hope you appreciate the simplicity of YOLO and the speed at which these things actually run. And uh, uh, in the next video, let's not just focus on this type of natural images. Let's actually focus on uh, our own custom images. And again, please watch the previous one, video number 332, so you know how to get your data set ready. I'll kind of walk you through a little bit in the next one, but that's going to be a quick crash course anyway. Okay, guys, let's meet in the next video. Until then, uh, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you.